Hello and welcome to Bolt Action Reloading. In today's video, we're going to test to see if this 115 grain DTAC behind H4350 will stabilize in our 6mm Creedmoor Ruger Precision Rifle. Stick around. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here and you'd like to see how I and the rest of you here make our group smaller, start now by subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon. That way you can get notified when I post new videos and you won't miss anything. Guys, today's video is solely about seeing if this 115 DTAC is worth trying in our 6mm Creedmoor Ruger Precision Rifle. If you've already seen my 6mm Creedmoor Reloading Overview video, actually stabilizing this 115 grain DTAC is actually kind of a long shot for our rifle solely based on twist rate. The actual twist rate recommended by Superior Shooting Systems is actually a 1 in 7 twist barrel. If you guys like to actually watch that video, I'll put a card up so you can go check that out whenever you're done watching this video. However, we're going to talk about most of the prudent information today. This, I'll put a shot of our test platform today. This is my 6mm Creedmoor Ruger Precision Rifle chambered in 6mm Creedmoor. It is a Generation 2, and if you want to know any details of the scope, I'll put that in the description box below. Now the primary reason why we've kind of been hesitant to try this 115 DTAC in our 6mm Creedmoor is solely because of the twist rate of our barrel. Our Ruger Precision Rifle comes with a 1 in 7.7 .7 inch twist barrel and the actual minimum recommended twist by Superior Shooting Systems is actually 1 in 7 twist. So we're not quite there. I have read on many forums that some people actually were shooting this with a 1 in 7.5 twist barrel and we're fairly close to that so I really thought it was worth giving a whirl. If you guys aren't familiar with this 115 DTAC, it is a very interesting projectile. I'll put a shot on the screen, but you can see that this is actually a repainted boat tail bullet. Um, if I would try and do a quick description, but if you guys really want to know all about this, I suggest running on over to David Tubbs' website and checking it out there. I think if you Googled either David Tubb or Superior Shooting Systems, you're probably going to get to where you need to go, and you can find out a little bit more about this projectile. This particular projectile actually has a ballistic coefficient G1 of 0 .620, and actually comes either coated or uncoated. These are actually the first coated bullets that I've ever actually tried, and honestly, had the uncoated ones been in stock, I probably would have shot them just for consistency's sake. They weren't, so I figured, well, the biggest thing I really want to know is will these projectiles stabilize in our rifle? So that is honestly the primary focus of today's test. Now, if you guys want to make fun of me, you can actually see I slightly modified my box. These actually were not purchased Hornady Brass. The 15 rounds we loaded for this test were actually from factory ammunition from our Hornady Black test. And like I said, the primary focus of today's video is solely seeing if they're stabilized to see if they'll perform. The only match case prep steps that we did was actually kneeling the brass, running it through the sizing, and resizing the inner diameter with our Sinclair Expander Mandrel tool. Ordinarily, I would have trimmed for length, but since all of the casings were under the maximum trim length of 1.920 inches, I just decided to let it go and run our test. Ordinarily, when we're really trying to gauge the performance, I would have wanted to trim for length just to make sure their cases were as consistent as possible. But this will have to do for today. Our primer for today is a Fed 215M Large Magnum Rifle Primers. Actually ran in a few of these and I couldn't think of a better primer to try and give us the best consistency possible, and so that's why we chose them for today's video. Again, going right to the cream of the crop, and honestly, where I could find the actual most low data online, if you want to call it low data, we're going straight to Hodgkin H4350. This is an actual superior performing powder in most cases, and has performed very well in other calibers, so no real shock of why we're trying it today. Talk about charge weights for a minute. Our actual charge weight started at 40 grains and actually went in 1 tenth increments all the way to 41.4 grains. Please keep in mind, we're actually pretty much just looking to see where we find pressure. I probably could have went up in 0.2 grain increments. However, when we're looking for velocity nodes, I do like that tenth of a grain. And keep in mind, we're really, we're just looking mostly for stabilization and to see what we could find. And find something we did. A little bit more load information. Our cartridge overall length was 2.780 inches. The CBTO, in case you guys are interested, is somewhere around 2.215. If you guys are wondering why I'm actually shooting these quite so short, the distance to the lands at this cartridge overall length in my rifle is somewhere about 12 thousandths. I'm not a big fan of putting bullets right out against the rifling. So at least for now, until our throat burns out a little bit, this is where we are at. So guys, instead of drawing us down any further, we'll just put our graph on the screen and you can see starting at an even 40.0 grains, our actual achieved velocity was 2884. All the way up with 41.4 grains, we actually achieved 2981 feet per second. Before we get into too much detail on the graph, we might as well show you the group. If you actually look at the overall group of all 15 shots, 0.951 MOA overall group. 
For 15 shots, having a total charge weight of 1.5 grains from top to bottom, I have to say I'm pretty happy with that group. Obviously, this projectile stabilized very well. Stare at that group to your heart's content, but I think it's safe to say our rifle can stabilize these projectiles, and the future of this bullet is looking pretty good for our channel, at least right now. Talk about the load day where we got these from just a little bit. Basically, two different sources, if you can call them that. Going to the Day on Sierra's website, you can look at the 110 grain Sierra Match King and see actually that for H4350, the max charge they have listed on there is 40.9 grains. Today, we are pretty well over that. However, I did see on some forums, some people posting data that they shot these all the way to somewhere around 41.4 grains. And so I figured I would just start at 40 grains, look for pressure as we went, and put a shot on the screen of the brass because I'm sure that's what we're all waiting for. And you guys can decide for yourselves. All in all, I have to say I'm pretty happy. You at 40, Even at 41.4 grains, you can see that basically no pressure signs at all to make me nervous about this. This is a large rifle primer brass, so there's no cratering at all. No ejector marks in any way, shape, or form. I really see nothing at all that makes me nervous about this particular load. Keeping in mind these are coated bullets, I don't know if we put the uncoated projectiles in here and did the same test, we would have the same results. I do think that coating makes things a little bit slipperier and possibly gives a different pressure curve. But right now I'm certainly not an expert on this, I'm just posting my results. Looking back at the chart for a few minutes, a couple interesting things to point out. If you actually look at 40.3 grains all the way to 40.8 grains, over six tenths of a grain of powder, the extreme spread was only 19 feet per second. And honestly, if I was picking a load, I think I would pick somewhere around that 40.5, 40.6 range, kind of right in the middle of that node. Very likely that there's a nice node, just, you know, 29, 10 feet per second. Obviously, we'd like to get this projectile going a little bit faster if we could. However, right in there seems to be a very nice velocity node and great to see if this bullet would group there. If we wanted to try a little faster and even 41 grains, seems like right around there seems to be a reasonable load or bumping it up again to 41.3 grains. Seems like there's a little bit of a node there, but certainly need to fire some more shots to say. I feel a lot more confident somewhere around that 40.5 to 40.6 grain load. Such a wide trough in the graph there. It does look like there's a very nice velocity node there. But again, I'm very new to this bullet. Certainly need some work needs to be done. Just trying to get some baselines for the projectiles. And I hope this was helpful if you were interested in trying this projectile out. If you guys are interested, hang out through the end of the video. I will put the shooting portion of this video at the end so you can actually see all the way. These were shot in order from 40 grains all the way to 41.4 grains in order. And you can see those as they showed up on the target if you're interested. So guys, love to know your thoughts in the comments section below. I have to admit, I am very excited that this H4350 and DTAC worked so well. I'm very excited to actually try some other powders. I'm wondering if Reloader 16 might get us a little faster. Well, hopefully maintaining no pressure signs. We'll just have to see. But we'll take this a little bit at a time. Really don't have any load data to go on. But I am very interested to see if we can get this going somewhere around 3,000 feet per second to see if this might be a great performer at distance. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, if you're interested in seeing the shooting, to stick around to the end of the video. But even if you're not interested, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you have any comments or questions, please put those in the comments section below. If you like the content or you're interested to see how this 115 is performing in the future, hit that subscribe button, turn the bell notification so you get notified when I post next week's video. And until then, stay safe in small groups.